that what we don't know is affecting us all the time. We don't... One of Jung's statements was that the purpose of life for humans is to make the unconscious conscious. So it's like all that we don't know to bring it into the conscious, our conscious awareness, that that's, that's our purpose. And it's bit by bit, day by day, drop by drop, you know, just making it conscious. And that's what dreams are in service to. Mm. So, yeah. What's our way in? How would we start um, even first noticing our dreams? And then from there, I'll ask you how we can start using them as information. The most important thing is to give something attention. And then hold the concept, just give yourself a little suspension of disbelief, hold the concept that the dream is coming for you for a reason now, because there's something in the waking consciousness that, that will look at it and say, that's just nonsense. You know, they're, they're, that's not important. I know what that's about. Um, and James Hillman used to always say, if you think you know what your dream means, you're wrong. It's talking from the unconscious. It's not something you're conscious of yet. So, the, so when you wake up, if, you know, for somebody who decides to do this and really does start want to just believe for the moment that this is important, I always recommend a little pad and paper. You know, I don't have one of my little pads. Oh yeah, here, you know, like this size is the one that I put by the side of my bed, you know, this little side, and I put a pen on top of it. Um, you know, if sometimes you'll be able to see, read what you wrote and sometimes you won't, but it's, it's training your brain to realize that you know that this is important and that you want to recall. And so when you go to bed, um, kind of tell yourself, I want to remember my dreams last night, just, just say to your dreaming mind, you know, I want to be in connection, coherence with you. Um, and, and so you kind of make an intention and the, that intention matters whether you remember your dreams or not, it, it matters that you're making the intention to be in, in uh, uh, respect for what comes to you in the dream. And then when you wake up in the morning, uh, this is one of what one of my dream teachers used to always say, he said, roll your eyes back to where you've just been instead of forward to, you know, get my coffee, brush my teeth, all those things. So, cause that's the first thing that our brain just goes to when we wake up is the forward movement. So mm -hmm. he says, just, and if you can, don't move your body because your body's holding the dream. And as soon as you crack it, I've, I've actually experienced that before. I just crack it to roll over and the dream's gone. So if you can remember, just hold your body in the space where you were when you were dreaming and, you, and it might help with the recall. So do that and just give attention. If you can't get it, no stress. This is not, you know, this is not a, something that you have to have that kind of anxiety about. It's just working with it, you know, patiently and as soon as you can in the day, because you'll remember more. Um, open your journal and write it down in present tense, not like I was at a college. You say I am in so that you're back in the sort of mind of the dream. And so write it all in present tense. And don't ignore any detail of the dream. You know, I see this plant in the corner. I see, you know, somebody comes in the room. Don't ignore any detail. And as much as possible, write down your dream. That sets it into your, you know, there's something between the hand. I Some people type their dreams and that's great if that works for them. For me, there's something in the brain, I think, that connects better. It starts to download. So as soon as I put that plant in the corner it, on the paper and I'm doing that, it starts to wake up, oh, that plant reminds me of, or has these qualities, or that's why, you know, it, it, it starts to download when you're writing it down or typing it down. So keep a really nice journal of your dreams. And then as after you've written it down as early in the day as possible, sometimes it won't be till after dinner at night, you know, it's just, you do the best you can. Um, it's, you start to let it muse with it, you know? So as you're driving to wherever you're going or as you're getting your breakfast or whatever it is, um, you start to let the, the images and the feelings and the colors and the moods on all those things in the dream start to, you let them percolate. Give them a, just a little bit of your attention. You've got other things you've got to put your attention on too, of course, but you just kind of roll with it as much as you can. Um, and then, uh, you know, in Jungian theory, which I uh, obviously respect, that's where I got my doctorate, but uh, he says every, every aspect of the dream is an aspect of yourself. So mm -hmm. if you see 
you know, um, whoever you see, whatever you see, whether it's human or, or more than human or other than human, it's all a, a mirror for you, some aspect of yourself. Like if it's, if it's a chest of drawers, that's the part of yourself that sort of stores things in departments or if it's, uh, uh, you know, whatever it is, it's, it's a part of yourself. So you say, why am I uh, being shown this part of myself today? What is it that is uh, mm. being, you know, discussed with me by the universe? And Freud, Freud's theory, and I like his theory too, is that it always is referring to something within 24 to 48 hours of the dream. So it's coming because, yeah, because you had this memory or you had this thought or you encountered somebody and had an interaction that's, you know, that's creating curiosity about what that was about. And so your dream may be addressing that. And it's, it's funny, you can find the, the strangest little connections of, of uh, you know, you ran into somebody, there was an exchange, and then, you know, maybe it's something completely other in the dream, but it reminds you of that. It gives you the mood of that, and then you start to see. So you just kind of open your mind, and it's not speaking directly. It's, so it's yeah. watch the things that kind of show up in your life that are uh, uh, addressing the, the thoughts or the perceptions that you're having about your dream and might be amplifying them or mm. redirecting something. Oh, I was sort of thinking this, but this is, you know, it's like watch, get into the dream thought, you know, into the dreaming time, the dream time, start paying attention to how things show up and what comes next. Dream. And if a random memory comes up, you know, like when you and your cousin were playing on the swing set when you were six, you know, and it doesn't seem to remember, relate to the dream at all, give it some important any associations that just come up as you start thinking about the dream are generally a clue it's mm -hmm. like you've started to plug into that and there are ways so um and um so any memories or any kind of um associations that that occur you know like when i think of that chest of drawers it looks like the chest of drawers in my aunt great aunt ruth's like house and so what were the experiences I had in that house? Why is my psyche wanting us to recall that right now? And, oh. you know, those kind of things. So allow for whatever randomly comes into your mind, because very often it's helping you to understand what the dream is referencing. 